All right, we've got a game. We're playing a 4.8 almost. Protoss player here, Gold Ox. Okay, so plan today, we're gonna play a ladder game. And then we're gonna go through some deep analysis. So what are we playing here? Do something fun today. Okay. Maybe we'll get cheesed. Maybe he'll macro us. Usually I get cheesed by this MMR, so I think that's <laughs> what's most likely on the table. But uh, you never know. Lately I've been trying out a lot more aggressive stuff. So that's going to be the plan. I'll show you guys how to play aggressive in PvP. But in general, the rule, if you want to be aggressive is you've got to be behind in something. Sounds like a funny rule. But if you think about it, if you guys are both getting the exact same thing, you don't really have... Um, you shouldn't have more than them, right? So in order for us to kind of commit to an attack, we got to have less of something so we can have more units. Um, usually that's an expansion. So usually you want to expand later. Um, but we'll see. Maybe we'll cut something else. You could, for example, um, cut some safety. You could not make sentries. Or you could skip getting a robo for DT. But yeah, as a general, you kind of got to cut something. You got to take a little bit of risk if you want to go attack. Or you got to cut economy. Okay, so this guy's playing pretty normal to gate. And he's got a little bit of chrono saved up. More than us. So, we're not, you know, we're not concerned about that necessarily. But we're noting it. We might become concerned later. Let's go double stalker. Um, so I'm a lot less concerned now. Because he's got a pylon on the low ground. If there wasn't a pylon on the low ground, I'd be a lot more concerned. Alright. Kind of funny. <laughs> We're still gonna get the pylon block here. And okay, so he's opened up sentry. So this is really nice actually because this is basically an open invitation for us to be aggressive. He's no longer doing any sort of aggression. So we can basically just go across the map. We're going to expand still, but I'm, I'm going to make four stalker. So we're a bit more committed. And I think the plan is going to be to go into like a four gate blink setup. So this is kind of one way you can be quite aggressive in this matchup. So the next thing we're going to get are some sentries. But then we're also going to get a uh, twilight council. And a robo. Okay, you notice I'm not really pushing the pace here too much because... He has more stalkers than us. But I did let him, you know, see the stalker. Feel a little bit of fear. Slightly. <laughs> Let's get a pylon. And then we still need that robo. Now the robo might seem like we're getting some, uh, you know, buildings here that are for safety. But that's not what it's for. We're going to get a war prism with that. So there's not much we can do here. He's actually made for Stalker himself. However, you'll notice that in order to defend, he did make some more stuff than us. He had um, a shield battery that we don't have. And he also had um, some sentries. I think he had more sentries than us. Now, you might be asking, okay, what am I cutting here? Because I said I was going to cut stuff, but it doesn't seem like I'm really cutting anything. Well, the thing I'm cutting right now is a forge. So normally, in PvP, you're going to grab a forge, but you can see I don't have that. Let's get an observer. And then we're going to get a war prism. Okay, so what is he doing? Yeah, so he has a forge. So he's planning on playing more of a macro game. And you'll notice that I have more gates than him. He's also got his robo, so he's not really cutting any corners. So, 
Oh, I shouldn't have warped in here. Let me just cut the probes temporarily because the warp prism is pretty important. So he's not really cutting any corners. So we're going to have more units for sure. It's just, we're just going to have more. And this is going to let us do a pretty strong attack here, especially if he expands. Let's do another scout. One more thing I'm going to do right now is just line up my warp ends. This is a pretty underrated thing to do. Uh, but pretty much, yep, I think every GM does this. I've, I know I've uh, heard Estrella talking about this as well, is line up your warp ends because if you get them coming in together, it's a lot easier to um, maintain your macro. Oh, where's my warp prism? Oh my god, it's, <laughs> it's way across the map. Jesus. Okay, so now we um, are going to come in here. He's actually got a lot more gates than us now, but you can't make gates for free. They cost money, so that means he's going to have way less units. It's actually a bad thing that he's got so many. So he's going to have, you know, maybe like six less stalker, something like that. Like he's in a lot more trouble than it seems here. Another round. Now we gotta be a little bit careful. Let's take our expansion. He's actually doing a really good job. Seems like he didn't overcommit at all to his um, stuff back at home, so he's okay here. Let's grab our forge because we're gonna have to progress now for sure. Um, one thing you want to do when you're being the aggressor is um, try to get multiple attacks going on because you have a unit advantage, um, but you're down in upgrades. You kind of need to make some plays happen. But, you know, even here, we're already making some plays. We don't need to do anything too crazy. Like, just kind of forcing him to delay his third is pretty helpful. So I'm going to blink these in. And then we're going to grab some gates. Multitask a bit. And we'll just recall out. Okay, next plan. We're going to go Dark Templar. We're going to continue the trend of playing super aggressive. We have a War Prism as well, so it's kind of nice having the War Prism. We're basically pre-set up to go DTs. Let's get some shield battery. I was kind of trying to delay these, but actually with the game plan we're going for now, we probably do want to grab those. In fact, it might be hard to hold this attack. I didn't mean to do that move command. Okay, so now we got the DT. Let's re-grab that. I have a little bit of extra minerals, so that's why I'm grabbing the uh, cannons here. I guess we can also maybe grab some more gates and go into charge now. Let's 
So he's actually went to defend that, but he left his whole base open here, so we can kill this now. And then we just consolidate at the end of this, and we should be winning. Yeah, so I'm going to get out of here quick, because now we're kind of under pressure almost. Like, we need to not die, and he's going to... He's, he's much more likely to be committed now. It's kind of his only play. So as long as we don't die, we win, basically. But, you know, defending here is not necessarily trivial. You don't want to get too cocky here and, like, take a fourth or something. Would be, I think, a big mistake. Yeah, much better to just make sure we're not going to lose. I was going to put my whole stalker army there, but I think this is actually a lot stronger. Just one stalker so I can see if he goes that way. Okay, he still hasn't attacked us. It's a bit strange. Let me get a war prism. Okay, he is coming. Just very slowly. I could use the shield battery, but... We're clearly very far ahead here. Could also go snipe the war prism. Is a good play. And that's game. We'll analyze this next because... Uh, I think this was a pretty instructive game and I actually think this guy played really well like um, this guy did, did not defend badly at, at by any means like he was quite strong um, which surprised me because 4800s usually just get rolled by this type of thing <laughs> so let's let's go through this because I think this guy made a lot of great plays um, okay so he opened sentry stalker he made a little bit of a mistake here just giving me this information too easily um, there's no real reason to give me info that you're going sentry. It's much stronger if you um, rally the sentry over here and then just have the one stalker shoot the uh, pylon. Um, and this way, this way your opponent doesn't know because you could have went second stalker. You just might have only used one to shoot the, the pylon. Um, so definitely a stronger move to do that. So that was his first kind of little mistake. Now he he's definitely on the defensive, right? Like... We're going to rush across the map with our two stalker. Okay. Next thing he's doing wrong is making a shield battery in the main. You definitely don't need this. Like, this is going to hurt your probe count. So, you don't want to make this. Instead, what you want to do is... Um, oh, wait. I guess he didn't scout at all this game, hey? Interesting. Yeah, this is very, very greedy. You definitely want to scout instead and make sure that it's not a proxy um, oracle just by uh, counting the pylons. If you see three pylons, then you're good. So he places the shield battery down. I think this is a little bit mistimed. You want to get these units first, but it's not too bad. Probably about now you'll start to see me get a big worker lead. And I'm... I'm it's not going to be a massive worker lead because I was also cutting probes a little bit to do this aggression. But it's a much bigger probe lead than... I mean, I shouldn't have a probe lead at all, basically. He should be the one that's ahead in probes because um, I'm making four stalker, which is pretty mineral heavy. So he should actually have like a two to three probe lead right now. And then that'll kind of even up because um, I'm the one putting pressure on. So he has a pretty solid defense here. He's not too greedy. I see a lot of people get their Twilight Forge really ultra quick. And that's not usually necessary. So that was nice. I did think he was being way overly safe. But um, I can see now just not scouting. It, it kind of makes sense. But it's still not completely sound for sure. Okay, Chrono Beam plus one. Definitely want a Chrono Blink. It's more important in my opinion. Robo. Yeah, so, so for us, you know, we're setting up the four gates really fast. And um, we're trying to get in the war prism. And then we're going for a massive push. So you'll see, like, right now, I should have a really big stalker lead. 
So it's it's four against uh, eight. And to be honest, I probably didn't push my lead here enough with the stalker count. Like, um, as soon as I scouted him and saw that he already had um, the forge early on and the robo, I could have already been like in his face right now, I think. Um, even though we don't have blink, it's totally fine. So I probably should have done that. Okay, actually, he did this in the wrong order. I thought he went for the third first, but it seems like he went for six gates before his third. And that's way too safe. You definitely don't want to be this safe. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> Silly mistake. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, six gates, forge, blink, robo. Yeah, just too many things. He's also got a second shield battery, so I feel like he's really worried. Um, which is kind of a good thing because it means he's scouting properly and he realized like, okay, there's no forge here. So that's definitely a threat. Um, but he didn't pick up on the fact that, or uh, he, he didn't, it's not that he didn't pick up on anything. He didn't know that he could be less, um, defensive here. Like he doesn't need this shield battery in the main. He doesn't need this shield battery. What he really needs is just to, um, take his expansion and then make, you know, four gates and maybe add in an immortal. Because he's giving me too much freedom here. Yeah, you know what? In retrospect, I probably should have picked up on the fact, like, how late this third was. Um, and maybe just uh, took my third right now. So here, stalker count is, like, 20 to 14. So we have, like, a four stalker lead. Definitely can't go into the shield battery, of course. Um, but, you know, he's kind of limited to his shield battery area, right? Like, he can't ever fight us here, for example. Because if he fights us here, we have more stalkers. And there's no way he can really catch up. Because he's mining the same amount of gas as us. So there's, there's really no way for him to kind of catch up on stalkers. So it's difficult. You know, he's got a... Yeah, he's kind of just relegated to this area of the map. And so we can take our third base easily and we can just continue pressuring as long as we continue to warp in, which is what we do. Um, however, I am going to get a forge. I got to catch up on the upgrades eventually. And we're going to try a little adept play here. But of course, he's he's uh, ready for this. It's just that he can not defend, you know, two locations at once. So he tries to go kill the adepts, but that lets us come in over here. Kill the third base and then at the same time we had a, a four stalker hit squad coming in over here this is a crucial number because it one shots probes so you can ignore shield batteries um and it's just more efficient so that's why we're doing four stalker here um and really important is when you do some sort of harass like this you just run away with the rest of your army it's really important that you don't fight in this position here because if you fight here you obviously are going to have less units like if i control click these you'll see that there is a 22 and if I control click here, you'll see there's 19. So. We run away. He actually got a couple kills there. Which was nice, but we got a couple probes as well. Looks like we got, um, actually I don't know, but there's probably like four kills. I think overall actually that wasn't great for us, was it? <laughs> he killed a stalker at the end here. Um, and he got two stalkers over here. So it was like, what, four probe kills for three stalkers yeah probably not the greatest in retrospect so now we're going dark templar um yeah my plan here is basically not to take a fourth um because in this position like we're already so far ahead we don't really need to do anything crazy um we're getting a dark shrine i think this is the easiest way to play the game it's just like expand really slowly at this level um, because the slower you expand, the more kind of, um, chances you get to, to win. Like, um, you can, let's say, let's say you take a really fast fourth. You basically have to play defense now and you can only use the basic units. So you gotta, you gotta basically defend everything your opponent throws at you perfectly. Whereas if you play like a slower expansion style, let them expand first, then you get to throw the punches. So, you know, you get to go for the Dark Templar drop. If they're not ready, you win. Or you get to go Disruptor, and if they don't, you know, see your Disruptor and you get a massive hit, okay, you win. 
So there's a lot of uh, chances like that if you're the player who expands slower. Don't take that advice if you're platinum. <laughs> and platinum, you should definitely be uh, just expanding a lot. So yeah, this fight, a couple of mistakes on both sides. But we're just ahead here, so it ended up going pretty well for us. And then, of course, the Dark Templar drop was kind of game-ending. Yeah, he was going Charge at Archon. I think Charge at Archon is definitely stronger comp, but, um, yeah, this is, uh... This is good in this position. Yep, and that's pretty much game. Oh, you'll notice here, I guess, this is worth mentioning as well, is um, I'm making a bunch of cannon. Again, just because we're winning so hard in this position, we just don't want to throw. So I have to put all of my money into the defense. There's no point like getting a Robo Bay here or, um, you know, adding more upgrades if we could. So we just need to put all of our money into the defense, just survive, and then we win the game. And um, I was kind of surprised how long it took him to push us, actually. I was sitting here like, man, where is this guy? It's, uh, <laughs> but I guess he's waiting for War Prism and a Warp In. You do got to be a little careful here as well. He's like pulling us away from the cannons, which is a good idea from him. And you shouldn't take this fight if you're not confident you can win. But of course, we have way overwhelming uh, numbers here, so it's no problem. And uh, yeah, that's game. So honestly, a pretty good game from him. He could have got the gates later, but uh, other than that, I think he played really well. Um, and it was only like small margins that uh, that let us win this game. Much, much better than his MMR, to be honest. So uh, GG. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe. Um, check out our Discord. And uh, if you want some coaching, you can check out my website, huishangcoaching.com. And even better, even before you get my coaching, go check out our memberships on YouTube. You uh, Or not the memberships, but the, um, what is it called? The uh, join button beside the subscribe button. We have some weekly practices every Wednesday and Thursday. And they're like one to two hours. So they're not even like short practices. They're pretty long practices. And um, you can become a member for only like $30. So you get like eight hours of... Uh, coaching group practice and uh it's, it's cheaper than one hour of my coaching so definitely check that out and uh thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next one